What's happening, everybody? On today's show, Alabama has got their guy. What is the tide getting in Kalen DeBoer? Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network covering your team every day. Well, Alabama has got their guy. Kalen DeBoer is going to be the new head coach at Alabama. It had been reported on uh, Friday afternoon and then of making it official uh, as the afternoon went along. Kalen DeBoer, the new head coach at Alabama. And joining us now to talk a little bit about the hire is our buddy Roman Tomashoff. He is uh, the host over there at uh, uh, Locked on Huskies, covering all things Washington. Roman, welcome in, man. How are you? Thank you, Chris. You know, I'm doing a lot better now because you just nailed my last name, which like rarely ever happens. So, hey, big, big shout out to you for that. But no, it's this it's it's been a whirlwind of a day up here in Seattle. I'm still reeling with the fact that I like literally two days ago, I was in Houston still recovering from covering a national championship. And so it's 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 been a, a very interesting week for me. Well, it's funny. I, I never, I never know. Like we have our locked on SEC hosts on all the time, and yeah. I never know when we're ever going to cross over into having somebody from the Pac-12 or Big Ten on, and it's always kind of funny. I, I never would have thought I would have had you on our show talking you know, somebody <laughs> from Washington of all places. But, <laughs> hey, uh, is that a shot at me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it, I think, and this is where I and, and I'm going to be honest with the, the fans here, just to give my take on the hire. I'm cautiously optimistic on the hire. And I say that I don't think it's a bad hire, but I'm hesitant. I'm in wait and see mode on how this plays out. I understand there's a lot of national people going to bat for Kalen DeBoer and a lot of SEC guys. I'm seeing guys like Barrett Salee and Cole Kublik and a lot of big names going, this is a home run hire. Oh, this is an absolute hit. This guy's a winner everywhere he's been. And I understand all that. But don't, you know, blame me for being a little bit hesitant when I say, Sioux Falls ain't the SEC. Like, just because you wanted Sioux Falls over a decade ago, that's great. But we've seen him at the FBS level for four years as a head coach. Two years at Fresno State, pretty good. Two years at Washington, excellent. But right. the SEC is a different animal. So give me your perspective of two years covering Kalen DeBoer as a head coach. What, what did you like about him? Pros and cons. Yeah, so just like just kind of as, as a pushback on your point of the Sioux Falls is not the SEC. You're absolutely right. But it's not like Sioux Falls is even, you know, Fresno State or the Pac-12, right? Where we saw the Pac-12 be a fantastic conference this year. It was one of one of the toughest. And we saw Kalen guide Washington to the not not just like, you know, their their first 12 and 0 season since 1991 or, you know, all, all the other things that he did with Washington itself. He guided Washington to the only undefeated season in Pac-12 conference history in terms of 12 and 0 and all that sort of stuff. So not only did he do that. He turned around a program that was four and eight two years ago. He did an unbelievable job doing that. And it's so one thing, and I I, I said this to our, our buddy Luke over on Lockdown Bama too, where one of the things that I heard from a lot of recruits when I, I talked to them right after Kalen got hired was, oh yeah, like, you know, like it's it's a bit of a, of a cliche is winners win, where you, you hear that a lot from, from like some, from their coaching staff. Like that was a big thing that they put out there where Kalen just knows what it takes to win in every element of the game, where he knows what his team needs off the field. He knows what his team needs on the recruiting trail, though. That, that's, that'd be the one area where I have questions is, can he level up his recruiting again? Because that was what we were promised here in Washington as part of this 2025 class that's going to be his first test down in Alabama is – he was supposed to be able to level it up into a top 15, top 10 kind of recruiting class. Obviously we're not going to ever know what that's going to look like, but that would be my one big question is he's going to find a way to win games. His scheme is elite. Everything he knows how to do off the field to prepare his players for once they get on the field is elite. 
So but, that's I, I that, that 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 that's kind of what I would say. Sorry, no, go ahead. Yeah, one other thing I, I just again just being and I don't even know if hesitant is the right word. I'm just I'm asking questions, right? I I'm I'm just not aboard the oh this is a home run hire it's going to work out and that's that. Like I'm I'm here to say what if it doesn't? Uh, is there anything to for for instance? Let's say he stayed another two three years at Washington. Him without Michael Penix, you know, sure. is what would that look like? And granted, you got to recruit well and you got to bring in a new quarterback. But like that's the thing too. He comes from the year at Indiana and then two years at Washington. He's had this great quarterback at his hip pocket the whole time, and it's like, right? What if, what if Michael Penix was just this really, really great quarterback, and you know, he's not going to have a quarterback that good again? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. So that that's definitely a very good question, and that's one thing where whatever this staff, like whether it be him, whether it be Ryan Grubb, whether it be a combination of them, with you know, uh, his his latest title here was general manager Courtney Morgan, who I'm assuming he'd also bring with him to Alabama. Whatever their talent evaluation process is at quarterback, I think that they can that they can find it with anybody because they brought in Will Rogers from Mississippi State to, to Washington, where I think that he would have done a really great job. You know, there's still a chance he stays for one year, wins the job there. We'll see what kind of works out with that. But another guy that they brought in that I'm really, really high on is um, he reclassified to be part of the class of 2023. His name is Austin Mack where he was a really high-ranked four-star after reclassifying. If he stayed for his senior year at Folsom High School down in, in California, he probably would have ended up as a five-star player. And he was somebody that Kalen and his staff identified really early on in the cycle, did a really great job of closing the deal, getting a commitment from him, and then getting him to reclassify so he could sit for a year under Michael Penix and learn. So there, I, I think that at the quarterback position that Kalen – and his his coaching staff should have the complete trust of of really if, if, let's say he moves on to the NFL at some point no matter what he decides at quarterback i think that he'd make the right decision uh the other thing i kind of had a, well well let's talk a little bit about cuz he's an offensive first coach so offensive the side of the ball is his specialty um i guess descri describe his brand of of uh you know of offense and and yeah. how you think that's going to work in the SEC so I'm, I'm really curious where I, 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 this is not a comparison I make lightly where I think schematically it could be a lot like what we saw with Joe Brady at LSU, where obviously, oh, like, you know, you could say what you will about him getting that kind of talent, but just that level of revolutionary and that level of, oh, this is new and exciting because that's what it was at Washington, where you saw just from, from week one, where there was just a whole lot of, oh, this is this is really interesting. We haven't really seen a lot of stuff like this in terms of all of the, just the schemes, the concepts, everything that he was doing, plus, you know, having a fantastic trio of wide receivers in Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, and Jalen Polk, where having all those guys in there as well really helps that out. But I think that he has done a really great job of creating a revolutionary modern scheme and believe that at Alabama, it's 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 going to be very hard to defend for some SEC teams. I've uh, the other thing I've I've heard, and again, I'm not. I, I want Alabama fans to be excited, right? If you're excited, and you're Alabama fan, great. If you're like me, and you're just being cautiously optimistic, then cool, you're with me. Uh, for people who hate the hire, look, that, that is what it is. I you know I've seen some Alabama fans go off the deep. Oh, he's not from the South. Look, you don't have to hire an SEC. Like not everybody's have says ties to the SEC. Now I will say. Building a staff is going to be imperative to have guys that do have SEC ties. I mean, when I think about recruiting, like, you know, I said the Mike Norvell Sark would have been a good hire because they've recruited the South. They've been to these high schools in Atlanta and, and all, you know, all across the South. Has, from Kalen DeBoer's perspective, has he ever been stepped foot on a high school in Atlanta or Orlando or anything like that? Not, not necessarily from my knowledge where he did a really good job, you know, going down and getting some, some players out of Texas over his time at Washington. But I, I think that that's that it's like, it's like, you know, to my, to my earlier point, that's where my question is going to be. But from what I know about Kalen DeBoer, from talking to players that he's had on the team from Texas, from Mississippi, from Michael Penix, from Florida, where having those kinds of guys, they all bought into his culture like that without, you know, a shadow of a doubt, without a second of, well, I don't know about this guy. So I think that that won't necessarily be a problem, but it's, I, I'm just, I'm curious to see how he's going to recruit at that big time level. Yeah. I've, I've seen a few people throw out, um, you know, can he, can he answer the call? And I've seen some people throw out, well, look at his record. He's three and zero against Dan Lanning. He's two and zero against Sark. 
He's 2-0 against Riley. And I'm going, wait, wait, let's pump the brakes a little bit. One of those is an Alamo Bowl last year. Texas had no interest in being in. Like, they were hoping for winning the Big 12, right? Like, the sure. loss of Oklahoma sticks with Sark. I don't think he looks back and goes, God, if I just would have won that Alamo Bowl. You know what I mean? Now, the playoff yeah. loss the playoff loss last week, absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's a nice win. And the wins over Oregon, absolutely as well. Everybody doubted Washington this year. Everybody kept picking Oregon to beat them. Both times they answered the call, and, and he beat right. Dan Lanning head-to-head -head and beat him last year head-to-head. -head. So, um... Just talk a little bit to that of everybody said, well, he's 3-0 against this guy, 2-0 against that yeah. guy. Yes, but not all wins are created equal. So, yes and no. Where when you look back at, at the uh, on it at the end of the day, a win is still a win, right? Like that's that that's where you can you can say to that perspective. But that's that's where it comes back to the whole winner's win thing. Where they Washington had, I believe it was eight or nine straight games that were decided by one possession this year. And as long as you win those games, does it really matter? Like that's, that that's, is, isn't it the point of why we do this? It's, it's all, right. all to win those games. And as long as you're winning the game, who, who cares what the final score is? I know that's a Pete Carroll thing. And I like, that's, that's just kind of the point of it all. Well, I'll Whereas, phrase, it, I'll phrase it sure. this way. Like Nick Saban and your one at Alabama lost to Louisiana Monroe. Like is Louisiana yeah. Monroe going, he's, he's uh zero and one against us. You know what I mean? Like the, the record right. thing, it's always like, it's whatever. Yeah. And, okay. So that, that, so that, that's a fair question where I think that those wins, especially when you look at the playoff win over, over Texas, you look at the wins over, uh, you look at the wins over Oregon and there are some other big ones too, right? Like going down and beating uh, a really good Oregon state team in Corvallis, going down to USC and taking down the reigning Heisman winner in Caleb Williams. His, his team has found a way to win a lot of big games and he has shown that he can coach really well in those big games. I'll say this as well. Um, you know, and, and it's not even a gripe, but we, but playing a lot of close games, like I think that's treme like tremendous. What they were like, how many one score games? I think prior to the the championship game, five straight games that he won one score games. I mean, that's there that's more not, than that. That's hard to there do. Was. I think it was I think it was eight total on the year. Yeah, but five in a row before the national championship game, and so. You know, one glass you say, man, this guy knows how to win close games against good opponents. Yes, but on the other one, maybe this, maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it was just, hey, he got hot one year, and this will be the best year Kalen DeBoer ever has in the history of coaching. Um, again, sure. it's, I, there's plenty of different ways to go on it. No, you're 100 right. Where there there are so many different ways to look at it, but. Then you look at his record. His overall record as a head coach is 104 and 12, where it's almost like, all right, is it is it a fluke at this point where he's doing it at different levels and he keeps leveling up and still winning? He keeps leveling up and still winning. And he does because it's the same thing at Fresno State, where you know, who, who would expect him to go back down and beat you at UCLA when he was doing that? And then comes to Washington, and right off the bat, that Michigan State team that they played last year, it wasn't very good, but they were still number 11 in the country at the time. And then they were 13 and a half point underdogs when they went down to Eugene in 2022 and they beat them. And, you know, if the, the ball falls a couple of different ways when they're playing at UCLA or at Arizona state, maybe we're talking about back-to-back pac 12 champions for this team where, and for, for Kalen DeBoer. So there are a lot of things that, yeah, that have gone his way. And there's still a few, few things that haven't. And he still kept finding ways to win games, despite all the injuries, despite everything else that got in his way. He has found ways to win games at the highest level. Last thing for you, and we're talking with Roman Tomashoff, uh, host of Locked On Huskies. And uh, Roman, um, I, it would be simple for me to ask you, do you think he will have success at Alabama? I can't ask it that way because that's everybody interprets, interprets it differently. Let's, right. let's do it this way. He's at Alabama. They are the pinnacle. They're the height of, uh, of college football. They were ready to fight. There were people asking to fire Nick Saban when he lost a game, one game. Right. So I'll say it this way. For Kalen DeBoer to be successful, he has to win a championship. So in the next five years, will Kalen DeBoer win a championship at Alabama? If, uh, I, 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 you know, if you would ask me when he got hired at Washington, if he was going to win a championship in five years, I would have said no. Because I just, I, I didn't know what the roster was going to look like. I didn't know what a lot of things were going to look like. So, but with everything that he's proven to me and to the entire country, when it comes to the last two years and what his track record has been at the power five level, I have to say yes. 
Roman, great stuff, man. Appreciate you uh, taking some time. For those of you guys who want to go check out Roman, I'm sure he'll be talking a lot more about Kalen DeBoer, a lot more on their now coaching search. They're looking for a coach, so the domino effect <laughs> kind of falls in college football. Roman, thanks so much for the time. Really appreciate it, man. Chris, thanks for having me. All right, that's Roman Tomashoff of uh, uh, Locked On Huskies, and appreciate him hopping on there with us as, uh, man, this thing is uh, – it's happening all across the country in, in terms of domino effect of Nick Saban retiring and, you know, who who's Kalen DeBoer going to hire to his staff, who's going to be his OC, his DC, and uh, much more. We're going to dissect a little bit more on Kalen DeBoer, kind of go over some of the talking points once more we did with um, right there with uh, with our guest, but uh, Roman, but we'll touch on that here in just a sec. First, I want to remind you guys, this episode is presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Look, FanDuel uh, has got you covered as we head into the NFL playoffs this weekend. There was plenty of action to get in on at FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. Right now, customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. And, of course, you can find them on the uh, FanDuel app. Super easy to use. They got all the tabs for you. Live games, same parlays. Uh, you want to just get in on the the over under. You want to take it a, a you know a big underdog straight up. Whatever it is, they've got it up there for you over there at FanDuel. And of course, when you go to their website, you want to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's going to get you the special offer that we told you guys about. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get that offer, make your first bet a layup, and then uh, download the FanDuel app and get yourself going. Check them out every day with all the action they got on uh, going on over there. They are FanDuel. They are the official partner of the NFL. Hi, right, roll along here, Lock On SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. And um, look, the big news coming out Friday afternoon that uh, – Kalen DeBoer has been hired at Alabama. And so I wanted to dive into a little bit more on it. Again, I told you guys, if you're an Alabama fan, be excited. You know, I think there's reason to be excited. If you're not, if you want to be cautiously optimistic like I am in wait and see mode, eh, let's see how he does. Fine. There's you can absolutely be that way as well. And if you're an Alabama fan that hates the hire, I get it, right? He's not one of us. He's not from the South. He's not from SEC country. He coached at Sioux Falls. The 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 most southern he coached was Indiana prior to this so i get it has he ever stepped foot on a high school in atlanta or you know, anywhere across the south uh probably not but can he learn absolutely can he hire a staff that's very experienced yeah and i said it earlier if he gets like a burton burns type assistant some, not burton burns per se but somebody like that that's got a ton of sec experience knows all the high school coaches in the state of alabama and georgia and florida great he'll hit the ground running because his X, x's and o's if they're as good as they were at washington He's going to win there. So, again, there's a lot of different varying opinions to have on Kalen DeBoer. None of them are right or wrong right now. But, again, I, I will say this. I've seen some people, you know, my buddy sent me a, a message earlier of uh, Cole Kublik tweeted out, you know, guy's a damn guy is a damn ball coach. Alabama fans should be thrilled. Listen to how his players describe him. Again, perfect. I, you know, I met Kalen DeBoer last week at the national championship. Seems like a great guy. But then – my buddy also sent me Cole had the same similar tweet about Brian Harson. Again, at the time, it felt like, oh, okay, Boise, we'll see if it works out. I just point being, we just, and I'm not taking a shot at Cole, by the way. Cole's tremendous in what he does. I'm just saying a lot of this is wait and see, and a lot of this is a gamble, right? We never know if if a, if a coach who has a tremendous track record and his players love him, absolutely. But in the SEC, it is sink and swim. It is throwing a 10-year-old into the deep end and saying, Can you swim? And Nick Saban turned out to be an Olympic swimmer and <laughs> was swimming laps back and forth. Some kids like Brett Bielema sink to the bottom and never come back up. The SEC will eat you alive. So that's where all we're saying today. But uh, look, Kalen DeBoer led Washington undefeated regular season this year, got to the national championship, and um, the deal is expected to be in the $10 million per year range and Alabama will owe Washington roughly $12 million in buyout money. That is from Ross Dellinger over at Yahoo Sports. Uh, Ross goes on to say that that combined with DeBoer's likely $10 million in salary, $10 million or more in salary makes this an incredibly expensive move for the Crimson Tide, a commitment of near or over $100 million total. Uh, we talked about offensive side of the ball is his specialty, so you expect Jalen Milrow, you know, like I haven't looked at any of the uh, early Heisman 
you know, offseason bets, but I got to think Jalen Milrow is going to be climbing up those 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 charts. Look at what he just did with Michael Penix. He was a Heisman finalist, finished second to Jaden Daniels from LSU. Jalen Milrow should be very successful. You know, we're assuming a lot here that he's going to still be the quarterback at Alabama and they'll have a bunch of weapons, whatever. But on paper, it feels like, okay, that's a win for Jalen Milrow. Uh, it is interesting, though. We go from Nick Saban, who had all the defensive experience as a head coach for the last 17 years at Alabama. Prior to that, Mike Shula's specialty was offense. Uh, Dennis Francione was offense. Mike Price, for that matter, was offense. So, uh, you know, Saban was kind of the exception, you know, for, for a while there, defensive-minded head coach. And now Alabama goes back the route of an offensive-minded head coach. But DeBoer's record as a head coach, very good. Um, but he has not coached for as many years at the top level of college football. I've seen a lot of people throw out his overall record as head coach, 104 and 12, and that is mighty impressive. But he went 67 and three at Sioux Falls in NAIA back from 05 to 09. Nick Saban was winning championships at Alabama and, and LSU during that time period, or Alabama, yeah, whatever. Dolphins in the mix there too, but um, that was a long time ago. It took 11 years for... Kalen DeBoer to finally become a head coach at the FBS level. 2020, he takes over Fresno State. He goes 3-3. Three and three. It's a COVID year, whatever. We give that a wash. The next year, he goes 9-3 and three at Fresno. Very good. Uh, these past two years at Washington, pretty phenomenal. Goes 25-3, and three, wins over ranked teams, beat Dan Lanning in Oregon twice this year, beat USC, Utah, Oregon State. Many of his wins this year came against the better teams, or the, the wins against the better teams were very close. He won eight one-score games, as I referenced earlier. In fact, prior to their beatdown at the hands of Michigan, Washington had won five straight games decided by one score or less. All these games these past two seasons, he had what was considered one of the best quarterbacks in college football, Michael Penix. So how much did Penix help DeBoer, and how much did DeBoer help Penix? We're going to find that out. Uh, his team at Sioux Falls lost just one Great Plains Athletic Conference game during his tenure. But as we know, the Great Plains is a far cry from the SEC. Uh, the one knock on DeBoer we have seen is his teams, uh, the way his teams have recruited high school football players. His 2024 class that he just signed this offseason, keep in mind we had the bulk of the class in the early signing period, uh, ranks 36th in rivals composite team recruiting rankings. His class last year in 2023 ranked 26th. You could say, okay, well, it's Washington. It's hard to recruit there. Um, but he did find some key contributors to the transfer portal, like Michael Penix, Dylan Johnson was a transfer from, from Mississippi State, uh, the running back. So, you know, he used the portal to his uh, benefit. You also got to think being in Alabama, it's it's going to be a lot hard, a lot easier for him to recruit there, right? Like the brand and the, the, the style of football and the brand of Alabama will sell itself for Kalen DeBoer. You, gotta, you have to think. But the tough part is you're going up against the Brian Kellys, the Kirby Smarts, the Hugh Freezes, these guys who have been in the SEC country for a little while. Brian Kelly's a little different, but Brian Kelly had a long track record recruiting at Notre Dame, which was recruiting nationally. So Brian Kelly had been to the South. He had been to Louisiana, Florida, all these places already. I don't know how much Kalen DeBoer's been down here. Um, so that's why I think assistants on his staff are going to be paramount. He needs, he needs guys who have recruited in the South. He needs guys with SEC experience. Whoever his coordinators are, his recruiting coordinator, whatever it is, it's going to have to be guys that have experience down here. I'm telling you right now, the reason Tom Herman didn't work at Texas is because Tom Herman didn't take enough time to go get to know the head coaches around the state of Texas. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian's doing that. Same thing at AM. Jimbo Fisher, a lot of high school coaches in Texas were turned off by Jimbo and his arrogance. Mike Elko was already, is already making the rounds going around the state of Texas. That's how you land the four- and five-star recruits. You can't just shell out NAL money left and right and assume that's just going to build yourself a recruiting class. You've got to have those relationships with the high school coaches. you got to start instilling that years, you know, when the kids are freshmen, sophomores, and then eventually juniors and seniors in high school. So um, we're going to see. We're going to see. Again, that. color me cautiously optimistic. I'm not saying it's a, it's a great hire. I'm not saying it's a bad hire. I'm saying it's a wait and see. Time will tell. You know, is he going to be – like I said, a Brett Bielema or, you know, one of these guys who comes to the SEC and great track record in other conferences. But you get here and you fall flat on your face. Chad Morris, people are very high on Chad Morris. And he comes to Arkansas and absolutely bottoms out. Um, you know, think of some of the co the coaches in, in recent years, you know, prior to Mike Leach at, at Mississippi State or um, 
you know, really before Lane at, at Ole Miss, just trying to think of different guys that, that have coached in this league that um, it is eaten up and chewed up and, and, and spit out. It, it happens. The SEC is big boy football. And, oh, don't look now, but here comes Oklahoma and Texas. So just final thought on Kalen DeBoer. Um, the question is, you know, who wants to follow the legend? And he's following the legend in Nick Saban. Ray Perkins is the guy who followed Bear Bryant at Alabama back in the day. It did not go well. So Bama fans are hoping it goes better than that. But I'll, I'll say this. Uh, listen to Feinbaum earlier. There was already a caller who said, well, yeah, I think Lane is going to be the next guy. Like, you don't want to be the guy who follows the legend. You want to be the guy who follows the guy who follows the legend. So if they're already thinking about who's going to be the guy to replace Kalen DeBoer, it may not go well at Alabama. We're going to find out. Again, I do think his, his X's and O's bringing him in, if they can keep most of this Alabama roster intact, I think he can hit the ground running in year one and have success next year at, at Alabama. Can, can he go 10-2 and two next year at Alabama and make the playoff? absolutely. freaking lutely The question is beyond that. How does he recruit and build recruiting classes past that? And Saban's going to be a, a key factor here. He's going to still help out a little bit where he can. He'll make that recruiting call if he has to. Um, they're going to have to ride Saban co Saban's coattails a little bit. You're going to sell the X's and O's and excitement of Kalen DeBoer. He just played for a national championship along with, hey, Nick's still around. Nick, we're still getting guys to the pros. Go look at all those championship rings and all these first-round picks we've, we've had here at Alabama. Nothing's changing. Just got a different guy in charge now. But Saban's still around. You want to talk to Coach Saban? We'll get him on the phone right now. That will be part of it. All right, coming up next here on Locked on SEC, a couple more tidbits real quick on uh, some moving and shaking happening across the SEC more Locked on SEC right after this. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. First, I want to remind you guys, this episode presented to you by our friends over at the Game Time app. Like we tell you all the time, you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big sporting event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all your favorite sporting events. College basketball is back in action. If you're looking to get to an NBA game, an NFL playoff game, whatever it is, Game Time has got your tickets up there for you. They're the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You get to see the view from your seat, so you know exactly what to expect before you arrive. They got all-in ticket prices to show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Go buy tickets in seconds with just two taps on your phone. Game Time is going to take all the guesswork out of buying tickets for you. Uh, go download the Game Time app today. Create an account. Use our code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N. That'll get you twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem our code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Check them out over there at Game Time. <laughs> All right, one more segment here on Locked On SEC. And, uh, yeah, there's some uh, some moving and shaking going on around uh, the conference right now. So I wanted to hit on just a little bit of that. Uh, one more Alabama-related tidbit. Um, Isaiah Bond, the Alabama wide receiver, entered the transfer portal on Friday. And according to some of the transfer portal rankings, they've ranked him as the number one wide receiver to enter the portal. Now, before this, it was the A&M wide receiver, Evan Stewart, who committed to Oregon. But uh, they have bumped up. I think it's 24-7 sports. They bumped Isaiah Bond up to the number one available or number one wide receiver to enter the transfer portal. And there are already rumblings that maybe Sark and Texas are coming calling. Sark is losing a couple of his top wide receivers to the NFL. They brought in Matthew Golden from the University of Houston. And now they could get Isaiah Bond from Texas. The only thing you hope is that Kalen DeBoer can get to Tuscaloosa in time and kind of settle, settle everybody's nerves. You know, can he call Isaiah Bond and you know, pull him out of the portal. It's still possible. Bond was second on Alabama's team in receiving yards this past season. Jermaine Burton was first. He's off to the pros. Bond had 668 receiving yards, four touchdowns in 14 games played. He was a sophomore, has two years of eligibility remaining. And, of course, there's this special 30-day window to enter the portal for Alabama players only because of their head coach retiring. Again, just because he's in the portal doesn't mean he's definitely leaving Alabama. But uh, other schools, other coaches are allowed to communicate with him. He's the uh, first player so far to enter the portal since Saban left, but he's the 18th scholarship player from Alabama who entered the transfer portal since the end of the season. So we will see where um, we'll see where he ends up. A couple other notes here over at uh, Auburn. We do have to just mention that uh, Auburn running backs coach Cadillac Williams, who was uh, 
you know, been a big piece of that coach's staff the last handful of years. 41 years old, he's coached Auburn's running backs for the past five seasons under three different coaches. Coached under Gus, Brian Harson, Hugh Freeze. Served as Auburn's interim coach when they fired Brian Harson, and uh, remained under Hugh Freeze's staff. Just completed his first year there, but he put out a statement that said, I love Auburn, love the players, extremely grateful for the opportunity Coach uh, Malzahn, Coach Freeze gave me these past five years on the planes have been nothing short of incredible. Auburn is and always will be a special part of my life. But he is moving on. And uh, we'll see where he ends up. There's some, you know, internet rumors out there on why he's leaving. You can go Google that if you want. But just pretty uh, pretty interesting because it felt like that was a big, big piece of when Hugh Freeze took over. Oh, we need Cadillac on our staff. we got to have him. The players loved him. There was a big push from fans to and players who wanted him to become the full-time head coach. So uh, one exit there and another exit, Auburn DB's coach Zach Etheridge has resigned from his position. Uh, Etheridge will head to Houston, according to a report, where he previously coached in 2019 and 2020. So Zach Etheridge moving on. He played at Auburn from 2007 to 2010, was a team captain of the national championship team. So both Zach Etheridge and Cadillac Williams moving on from Auburn. Uh, the cornerback Keontae Scott. Uh, was initially reported to put his name in the transfer portal, but ultimately removed himself, and he will return to Auburn. So a big piece of that Auburn secondary coming back. But they're going to lose guys like Jalen Simpson, Zion Puckett, Nehemiah Pritchett, DJ James. A lot of work to do. Uh, one other Auburn note, they did make it official, bringing in uh, Charles Kelly, veteran defensive coach. He's been named co-defensive coordinator at his alma mater. Uh, played at Auburn from 86 to 89 under Pat Dye. Came back to the Plains in 93 as a grad assistant. Most recently served as defense coordinator at Colorado under Dion. Uh, prior to that, had four years as the associate defensive coordinator at Alabama, where he won a national championship in 2020. So, Charles Kelly, back in the SEC and uh, coaching under Hugh Freeze. So, again, lose Cadillac Williams, you lose Zach Etheridge, you add Charles Kelly to the mix. And uh, there you have it. I think we caught you up on all your Alabama and uh, Auburn news for the day. All right, that is... Going to do it for this special edition of Locked on SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to everydayers. Call back Monday. Join us on the show. And uh, go check out our first ever uh, national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube for your second listen. Locked on sports today. You can find it. It'll have the little live button streaming live on 24-7 uh, on YouTube. So locked on sports today. Go check that out. I'm Chris Gordy. You guys have an awesome weekend. We'll be back on Monday, probably with a uh, recap of a Kalen DeBoer press conference or getting set for one. We'll talk about it then. Have a great weekend, everybody.